Wrist and Hand Conditions, Chapter 16. Wrist conditions to be discussed within this lecture include fractures, which include the distal, radial, ulnar, and scaphoid fractures, lunate dislocation, wrist sprains, TFCC injury, carpal tunnel syndrome, and ganglion cysts. A fracture of the forearm can be classified as to whether it involves only the ulna, which is known as an ulnar fracture, only the radius, which is a radial fracture, or both, which is a radial ulnar fracture. Fractures of the distal forearm are most likely to occur at the radius. In young patients, the epiphyseal plate may be the site of fracture. Common mechanisms of injury include falling on an outstretched hand or foosh, which is likely to result in a collie's fracture, or falling on the back of the hand with the wrist flexed, which is likely to result in a Smith fracture. General signs and symptoms include pain and deformity. Specific fracture types of the radius include a collie's fracture, which is a distal fracture of the radius with dorsal or posterior displacement of the wrist and hand. A dinner fork deformity is commonly seen. Smith fracture is a distal fracture of the radius with a volar or anterior displacement of the wrist and hand. When managing a wrist fracture, it is important to immobilize, manage the pain, and refer the patient to a medical facility for bracing and possible surgical intervention. A scaphoid fracture is a fracture to the scaphoid bone, which is also known as the carponavicular. It is the most common type of carpal bone fracture. Scaphoid fractures usually cause pain at the base of the thumb, accompanied by swelling in the same area. Scaphoid fractures usually cause pain and sensitivity to palpation in the anatomical snuff box at the base of the thumb. Treatment depends on the location of the fracture. Fractures of the scaphoid can occur with either a direct axial compression or with hyperextension of the wrist, such as a fall on the palm of an outstretched hand or foosh. Treatment of scaphoid fractures is guided by the location of the bone of the fracture, either proximal, waist, or distal. Displacement, whether it has instability or not, of the fracture and patient tolerance for cast immobilization. Non-displaced or minimally displaced waist and distal fractures have a high rate of union or complete healing with closed cast management. If the fracture does not heal correctly or becomes a non-union fracture, which means the two parts of the bone do not completely heal, then surgical intervention may be necessary. The lunate is the most commonly dislocated carpal bone. The lunate dislocations are traumatic wrist injuries that require prompt management and surgical repair. The lunate typically gets displaced and will rotate volarly or towards the palm. The rest of the carpal bones are in a normal anatomical position in relation to the radius. Lunate dislocations typically occur due to a fall on an outstretched hand or foosh or during a motor vehicle injury where there is a forceful dorsiflexion of the wrist. Patients present with wrist pain following a fall. Volar wrist swelling is usually prominent. The swelling often causes a decrease in two-point discrimination in the median nerve distribution. This means that people can't tell when you're touching one part of the hand or another. This is due to acute carpal tunnel syndrome. Patients often prefer to hold their fingers in partial flexion due to pain on extension. Urgent reduction in surgical repair of the disrupted ligaments is required to prevent long-term joint dysfunction. Despite treatment, there remains a high risk for future degenerative arthritis and wrist instability. Kleinbach disease is a breakdown of the lunate bone. Specifically, Kleinbach disease is another name for avascular necrosis, or death and fracture of a bone tissue due to interruption of blood supply. This occurs with fragmentation and collapse of the lunate. A wrist sprain is a common injury for all sorts of athletes. It takes a momentary loss of balance. As you slip, you automatically stick your hand out to break your fall. But once your hand hits the ground, the force of the impact bends it towards your forearm. This can stretch out the ligaments that connect the wrist and hand bones a little too far. And this results in tiny tears or even worse, a complete break of the ligament. Symptoms of a wrist sprain are pain, swelling, tenderness and warmth around the area, feeling of popping or tearing in the wrist, and bruising. While a wrist sprain can bench you for a while, the good news is that minor to moderate wrist sprains should heal on their own. They just need a little time. To speed the healing, you can rest your wrist for at least 48 hours. 
Ice the wrist to reduce pain and swelling. Compress the wrist with a bandage. Elevate the wrist above your heart on a pillow or on the back of a chair as much as you possibly can. Take NSAIDs for painkillers. Use a cast or splint to keep your wrist immobile and practice stretching and strengthening exercises if your athletic trainer, physical therapist, or doctor recommends them. The TFCC or the triangular fibrocartilage complex has a substantial risk for injury and degeneration because of its anatomical complexity and the multiple functions. Application of an extension pronation force to an axial loaded wrist, such as in a fall on an outstretched hand, causes most of the traumatic injuries to the TFCC. Dorsal rotation injuries, such as when a drill binds and rotates the wrist instead of the bit, can also cause these traumatic injuries. Injuries may occur from a distraction force applied to the volar forearm or the wrist. Finally, tears of the TFCC are frequently found by patients with distal radial fractures. Perforations and defects in the TFCC are not all traumatic. There is an age-related correlation with lesions in the TFCC, but many of these defects are asymptomatic, which means the patient doesn't experience symptoms. These lesions commonly occur by patients with positive ulnar variants. Chronic and excessive loading throughout the ulnar carpal joint causes degenerative TFCC tears. These tears are a component of ulnar impact syndrome. Even though natural degeneration of the ulnar carpal joint is very common, it is important to recognize. Patients with TFCC injury usually experience pain or discomfort located under the ulnar side of the wrist, often just above the ulnar styloid process. However, there are also some patients who report diffuse pain throughout the entire wrist. Rest can help reduce the pain and activity can make it worse, especially with rotating movements, supination and pronation of the wrist, or movements of the hand sideways towards ulnar deviation. Other symptoms patients with TFCC frequently mention are swelling, loss of grip strength, instability and grinding or clicking sounds, also known as crepitus, which can occur during activity of the wrist. Treatment of TFCC injuries should include referral to a hand specialist. Treatment of TFCC injuries often occurs by treating the symptoms of the condition. If the symptoms become severe or the tear has been diagnosed, then surgery might be required. The carpal tunnel is located on the anterior aspect of the wrist. It is composed of a floor, the carpal bones, and the roof, which is the transverse carpal ligament. It contains eight flexor tendons and their synovial sheaths, as well as the median nerve. There are a lot of structures and a very, very small space. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a medical condition due to compression of the median nerve as it travels through the wrist at the carpal tunnel. The main symptoms are pain, numbness and tingling. This may be in the thumb or the index finger or the middle finger or the thumb side of the ring finger. Weak grip strength may occur and after a long period of time, the muscles at the base of the thumb may waste away. In more than half of the cases, both sides are affected or both hands have this carpal tunnel syndrome. About 5% of the people in the United States have carpal tunnel syndrome. It usually begins in adulthood and women are more commonly affected than men. Up to 33% of people may improve without specific treatment over an approximate year. Carpal tunnel syndrome was first fully described after World War II when more desk jobs became available and less manual labor was needed. Most cases of carpal tunnel syndrome have an unknown cause. Carpal tunnel syndrome can be associated with any condition that causes pressure on the median nerve at the wrist. People with carpal tunnel syndrome experience numbness, tingling, and burning sensations in the thumb and the fingers, particularly index and middle finger, the radial half of the ring finger because they receive their sensory and motor function from the median nerve. Ache and discomfort can also possibly be felt for more proximally in the forearm and even the upper arm. Less specific symptoms may include the pain in the wrist or hands, loss of grip strength, and loss of manual dexterity. Numbness and paresthesia in the median nerve distribution are the hallmark neuropathic symptoms of carpal tunnel entrapment syndrome. Weakness and atrophy of the thumb muscles may occur if the condition remains untreated because the muscles are not receiving sufficient nerve stimulation. Discomfort is usually worse at night and in the morning. General accepted treatments include physical therapy, steroids either orally or injected locally, 
splinting, and surgical release of the transverse carpal ligament. A ganglion cyst is also known as Gideon's disease, a Bible cyst, or a Bible bump. It is a non-neoplastic soft tissue lump that may occur in any joint, but most often occurs on or near joints or tendons in the hands and feet. These cysts are caused by leakage of fluid from the joint into surrounding tissue. The average size of these cysts is about 2 centimeters, but cysts that have been removed have measured more than 5 centimeters. The size of the cysts may vary over time and may increase after activity. These cysts most frequently occur around the dorsum or backside of the wrist and fingers. A common site of occurrence is along the extensor carpi radialis brevis as it passes over the backside of the wrist joint. Although most commonly found in the wrist, ganglion cysts may also occur in the feet. Most ganglion cysts are painless. Other than the frequent choice to leave the cyst in place, surgical treatments remain the primary elective option for treatment of a ganglion cyst. The progression of ganglion surgery worldwide is to use orthoscopic or mini opening method. Alternatively, a hypodermic needle may be used to drain the fluid from the cyst, and a corticosteroid may be injected after the cyst is empty. However, if the fluid is thickening, owing to the passage of time, this treatment is not always effective. There is a recurrence rate of approximately 50% following needle drainage or aspiration of ganglion cysts. One common method of treatment for a ganglion cyst has been to strike the lump with a large heavy book, causing the cyst to rupture and drain into surrounding tissues. Historically, a Bible was the largest choice or only book in a given household and commonly was used for this treatment. This led to the nickname of Bible bump or Gideon's disease for these cysts. This treatment is now not recommended. Common hand and finger conditions include Bennett's fracture, boxer's fracture, phalangeal fracture, finger dislocations, IP sprains, gamekeeper's thumb, strains, jersey finger, mallet finger, boutonniere deformity, tendinopathy, trigger finger, de Quervain syndrome, and subunguinal hematoma. Bennett's fracture is a fracture of the base of the first metacarpal bone, which extends into the carpometacarpal joint. This intraarticular fracture is the most common type of fracture at the thumb, and it nearly always is accompanied by some degree of subluxation or dislocation of the carpometacarpal joint. Symptoms of a Bennett fracture include instability of the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb, accompanied by pain and weakness in the pinch grasp. This is when the thumb and the first finger come together. Characteristic signs include pain, swelling, and ecchymosis around the base of the thumb and thenar eminence, especially over the carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. The thenar eminence is the fleshy part on the palm of your hand towards the thumb. The patient will often have a weakened ability to grasp objects or perform such tasks as trying to tie shoes or tearing a piece of paper. Other complaints include intense pain experienced upon catching the thumb on an object, such as reaching into your pants pocket. Bennett's fractures are serious and need to be referred immediately. If left untreated, these fractures can result in severe long-term dysfunction of the hand. We need to manage the pain. Typical treatment will include internal fixation or the use of pins, plates, rods, and screws to treat the fracture through surgery. A boxer's fracture is a colloquial term for a fracture of one or more of the metacarpal bones of the hands. Classically, the fracture occurs transversely across the neck of the bone after the patient strikes an object with a closed fist. Alternative names include scrapper's fracture or barroom fracture. Metacarpal fractures are usually caused by the impact of a clenched fist with a hard, immovable object such as a skull or a wall using improper punching techniques. When a boxer punches with proper form, the knuckles of the second and third metacarpal align in line with the articulating radius, followed by the humerus. Due to the linear articulation of the bones, the force is able to travel freely across these joints and bones and be dissipated without injury. Therefore, fractures of the second or third metacarpals are rare, with fractures of the fourth and fifth metacarpals comprising the vast majority of metacarpal fractures. The symptoms are pain and tenderness with specific locations in the hand. They correspond to the metacarpal bone around the knuckle. When a fracture occurs, there may be a snapping or popping sensation. There will be swelling of the hand along with possible discoloration or bruising in the affected area. 
Abrasions or laceration to the hand are also likely to occur. The respective finger may be misaligned and movement of that finger may be limited and painful. Conservative treatment is to apply a splint to immobilize the affected part of the hand and allow for healing. If the broken parts of the bone are misaligned by more than 70 degrees, or if a physician is unable to reduce or realign the fragments by manipulation, surgery may be required to place pins or plates into the bone and hold the pieces in place. Fingers have the highest rate of injury for all the parts of the hand. You can injure your finger while working with a tool such as a hammer or a saw. Your finger can break when a fast moving object hits your hand, such as a baseball. Slamming your hand in a door or putting your hands out to break your fall can also cause you to break your finger. The symptoms of a broken finger include pain, swelling, tenderness, limited range of motion. Your finger may also look misshapen or out of alignment or deformed. Broken fingers may be very painful, especially when you try to move them, but sometimes that discomfort is just a dull ache and may be tolerable. The absence of extreme pain does not mean that the fracture does not require medical attention. Treatment for a broken finger depends on the location of the fracture and whether it is stable. Taping the fractured finger to an adjacent intact finger may treat the stable fracture. Unstable fractures require immobilization. After your fracture has been reduced, a splint may be applied. If your fracture is unstable, your doctor may need to perform surgery. Surgery stabilizes the fracture when you have multiple fractures, loose bony fragments, a joint injury, damage to the ligaments or tendons, unstable, displaced, or open fractures, or an impaction fracture. In a non-displaced fracture or a stable fracture, the bone cracks slightly or completely but does not move. In a displaced fracture, the bone breaks into separate pieces that move and no longer line up. A commuted fracture is a displaced fracture in which the bone breaks into three or more pieces. The best way to test for a phalangeal fracture is to try to have the patient make a fist and then look for finger alignment. You can see in the picture on the lower right, this person can no longer make a fist and the ring finger does not align with the other fingers. Finger dislocation is a common injury. It occurs when the bones of the finger are moved or dislocated from their normal position. A dislocated finger can occur in any of the joints of the finger, but occurs most often in the middle knuckle of the little, ring, middle, and index finger. A dislocated finger is caused by a jamming force that is applied to the end of the finger, or the finger may be forcefully overextended. Either of these situations, or a combination of both, can result in a dislocation. For example, during sports activities, a basketball or baseball may strike the tip of an outstretched finger. Your finger might get caught in equipment such as a game jersey or pads. You might fall onto an outstretched hand. A dislocated finger is usually obvious. The finger appears crooked, swollen, and is very painful. It may be bent upwards or at strange angles. You probably won't be able to bend or straighten the finger if it is dislocated. Also, numbness or tingling may occur with a severe dislocation. The injured finger may appear pale in color. This is due to a lack of blood flow. Dislocations can cause a break in the skin where the injury occurs. If this occurs, you should get medical attention right away. It is not recommended that you treat a finger dislocation at home. A visit to a doctor's office or the emergency department is usually necessary. If you have a dislocated finger, the finger will swell. To prevent further injury to the finger, immediately remove all jewelry, if possible, such as rings. Apply an ice pack to your injured finger and elevate the hand above the level of the heart. Injuries to the soft tissue surrounding and supporting the metacarpal phalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the fingers and thumb are common. Injuries range from minor sprains that resolve with minimal treatment, such as the partial ligamentous tear treated with buddy taping or splinting, to more severe injuries that require surgical intervention, such as a complete tearing of the ligaments or dislocation of the joint. Patients with finger sprains and dislocations typically report a history of jamming the finger with pain and swelling in the involved digit. Deformity may be visible if a dislocation has occurred, although the lack of deformity does not exclude that diagnosis. Inspection of the digit may also reveal ecchymosis, abrasions, and lacerations. Tenderness to palpation should be assessed. Radial and ulnar joint line tenderness implies collateral ligament injury, or fracture, 
whereas volar tenderness implicates injury to the volar plate. Treatment of an IP sprain is typically buddy taping, which is when the finger is taped to the nearest available healthy finger or splinting of the fingers or thumb. Also, price can help with pain management. Gamekeeper's thumb, also known as skier's thumb or ulnar collateral ligament tear, is a type of injury to the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb. The UCL is torn at, or in some cases even evolved from, its insertion site into the proximal phalange of the thumb in the vast majority of cases. This happens approximately 90% of the time. This condition is commonly observed among gamekeepers and Scottish fowl hunters, as well as athletes such as volleyball players and skiers. It may also occur among people who sustain a fall to an outstretched hand and kind of land on their thumb. Symptoms of gamekeeper's thumb are instability of the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the thumb, accompanied by pain and weakness in the pinch grasp. The severity of the symptoms are related to the extent of the initial tear of the UCL, in the case of skier's thumb or how long the injury has been allowed to progress in the case of gamekeeper's thumb. Characteristic signs include pain, swelling, and ecchymosis around the thenar eminence and especially over the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. Physical examination demonstrates instability of the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. The patient will often manifest with a weakened ability to grasp objects and perform such tasks as tying shoes or tearing a piece of paper. Other complaints include intense pain experienced upon catching the thumb on an object such as reaching into the pants pocket. The ulnar collateral ligament is an important stabilizer of the thumb. Thumb instability resulting from disruption in the UCL profoundly impairs the overall function of the involved hand. Because of this, it is critical that these injuries receive appropriate attention and treatment. Referral can determine if surgery or conservative treatment is right for the injury. A jersey finger is an injury to the flexor digitorum profundus tendon at its point of attachment to the distal phalanx. This injury often occurs in American football when a player grabs another player's jersey with the tip of one or more of his fingers while the player is running or pulling away. The force of this action hyperextends the tip of the finger at the distal interphalangeal joint while the proximal portion of the finger is flexed. This action can partially or completely rupture the flexor digitorum profundus tendon at or near its attachment point on the distal phalanx. Sometimes the force is great enough to pull off or avulse a piece of the phalangeal bone to which the tendon can remain attached. The torn FDP or flexor digitorum profundus tendon can retract slightly, remaining at the finger near the PIP joint, or can retract more fully into the palm of the hand. A person who suffers a jersey finger injury in which the flexor digitorum profundus tendon is completely ruptured cannot flex the affected digit at the DIP joint without assistance. Symptoms include a pop or rip felt in the finger at the time of injury, pain when moving the injured finger, and an inability to bend the last joint, tenderness, swelling, and warmth of the injured finger, bruising after 48 hours, and occasionally a lump is felt in the palm of the finger. Treatment of jersey finger should include a referral to a hand specialist to determine treatment. Possible surgery to reattach the flexor digitorum profundus may be possible. Mallet finger is also known as baseball finger or basketball finger. It is an injury of the extensor digitorum tendon of the finger at the distal interphalangeal joint. It results from hyperextension of the extensor digitorum tendon and usually occurs when a ball, such as a softball, basketball, volleyball, or dodgeball, is trying to be caught, but it hits an outstretched finger and jams it, causing a rupture and stretched extensor digitorum tendon. Mallet finger can be caused by a blunt force on the distal interphalangeal joint. Patients who are diagnosed with mallet finger have an inability to extend their finger and experience pain and numbness. Depending on how severe the injury is, the patient can be prescribed medication in, in order to prevent infection. Also, most mallet finger injuries can be treated without surgery. Once a patient has been identified with a mallet finger, ice should be applied immediately and the patient's arm should be elevated above the heart to reduce blood circulation to the fingers. This is because this reduces inflammation, which causes further damage. The patient should be seen by a doctor within a week of the injury. Treatment options include surgery or putting the finger in a mallet splint for six to eight weeks or an extension block for four weeks. The splint allows the tendon to return to normal length. If the finger is bent during these weeks, the healing process must start over again. Surgery is used to reattach the tendon and is usually 
perform within a week of the injury. Demonstrations of the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle and tendon on the left and the flexor digitorum profundus muscle and tendon on the right. These are both very long muscles with very long tendons. Boutonniere deformity is a deformed position of the fingers or toes in which the joint nearest to the knuckle or the proximal interphalangeal joint is permanently bent towards the palm while the furthest joint, the distal interphalangeal joint, is bent back away. It is commonly caused by injury. In boutonniere deformity, the tendon on the top of the finger, called the central slip, is torn or cut from the other tendons. This creates a tear that resembles a buttonhole or boutonniere in French. The first finger joint is flexed down and the fingertip then bends back at the second joint. The tendons on this part of the finger are flat and thin. They are prone to injury. If you have a boutonniere deformity in the thumb, it affects the joint called the metacarpal phalangeal joint. Boutonniere deformity can be caused by a powerful blow to the finger, a cut in the finger's central slip, an injury to the first finger joint called the proximal interphalangeal joint, or severe burns to the hand. Symptoms include pain and swelling on the top of the middle finger joint, or the PIP joint, inability to straighten the finger at the middle joint, signs of injury such as fracture or dislocation to the proximal interphalangeal joint, or signs of injury such as fracture or dislocation to the metacarpal phalangeal joint if the thumb is involved. Treatment for a boutonniere deformity should include splinting the finger in complete extension and immediate referral to a hand specialist. This is a picture illustrating the central slip, which is torn during a boutonniere deformity. This creates a tear that resembles a buttonhole or boutonniere in French. The first finger joint is forced down and the fingertip bends backward at the second joint. Trigger finger, trigger thumb, or trigger digit is a common disorder characterized by catching, snapping, or locking of the involved finger flexor tendon associated with dysfunction and pain. A disparity in size between the flexor tendon and the surrounding retinacular pulley system, most commonly at the level of the first annular pulley, results in difficulty flexing and extending the finger and the triggering phenomenon. The label of trigger finger is used because when the finger unlocks, it pops suddenly as if releasing a trigger on a gun. Injection of the tendon sheath with a corticosteroid is effective over weeks to months in more than half of the patients. When corticosteroid injections fail, the problem is resolved by a simple surgical procedure. The surgeon will cut the sheath that is restricting the tendon. Jaquervain syndrome is also known as blackberry thumb, texting thumb, gamer's tenosynovitis, and is an inflammation of the sheath or the tunnel that surrounds the two tendons that control movements of the thumb. Jaquervain syndrome is typically a result of repetitive movements and stress on the wrist. Postures where the thumb is held in abduction and extension may contribute to this condition. In addition, people who perform rapid repetitive activities involving pinching, grasping, pulling, or pushing have been considered to be at increased risk. Symptoms are pain at the radial side of the wrist, spasms, tenderness, an occasional burning sensation in the hand, and swelling over the thumb side of the wrist and difficulty gripping with the affected side of the hand. The onset is often gradual. Pain is made worse by movement of the thumb and wrist and may radiate into the thumb and forearm. Treatment for Dequervain syndrome includes price and NSAIDs, steroid injections, and immobilization or surgery may be also used for protocols in this condition. A subunguinal hematoma is a collection of blood underneath a toenail or fingernail. It can be extremely painful for an injury of its size, although otherwise it is not a serious medical condition. It is sometimes known as a runner's toe, tennis toe, or skier's toe. Runner's toe is common condition seen in runners by downward pressure or horizontal separation of the nail plate from the nail bed. This repetitive trauma injury leads to bleeding and pooling of blood underneath the nail plate. Clinically, it is characterized by a reddish-black discoloration of the toenail. Runner's toe is often associated with malfitting shoes and insufficient space for the toes. Some susceptible runners may also have what's called Morton's toe. In this variation of human foot anatomy, the second toe extends further out than the great toe. The key to prevention of runner's toe is to purchase properly fitted shoes. The condition also results from a traumatic injury, such as slamming a finger in a door, or from sports activities, such as climbing or hiking in rugged terrain. The bleeding comes from the vascular nail bed underlying the avascular nail plate. A laceration of the nail bed causes bleeding to the constricted area underneath the hard nail plate. Throbbing pain is common. The nail develops a black discoloration overlying the nail bed, but is underneath the nail plate. 
subunguinal hematomas are treated either by releasing the pressure conservatively when tolerable or by drilling a hole through the nail into the hematoma or by removing the entire nail. Trifing is when we drill a hole through the nail into the hematoma. It is generally accomplished by using a heated instrument to pass through the nail into the blood clot. Removal of the nail is typically done when the nail itself is disrupted, a large laceration requiring suturing is suspected, or a fracture at the tip of the finger occurs. Although general anesthesia is generally not required, a digital nerve block is recommended to be performed if the nail is to be removed. Subunguinal hematomas typically heal without incident, although infection or disruption of the nail may occur. Typical tools for relieving a subunguinal hematoma include a battery-powered fingernail drill bit, a high-temperature cautery device, a heated paper clip or needle. After the creation of the hole in the nail, add pressure to help remove the excess blood. Be aware that the blood is under a lot of pressure and may squirt out of the nail when punctured or when pressure is applied. Be sure to wear protective equipment including a face shield and safety eyewear.